This is really bad timing. They want five million wire to an account. You tell whoever's got you, there is no deal unless they come way down on the price. What? I was looking at scripts and uh, it was a spec script. While it wasn't exactly how it is now, I thought the idea felt very real and believable. If it was played straight, it would still have humor and be entertaining. If I play Elaine, she's a tough one to explain. She kind of functions as a business partner to Joel Edgerton's character in the film. And the two of us are just kind of like frick and frack in the movie. We're kind of causing a lot of drama. I liked her because there was something so unfiltered and unapologetic about her that I just had to appreciate that. You with your whole, hey, Elaine, I got the perfect guy for us. My good buddy, Harold Sinka. In many ways, the film looks at what is the American dream? What has it become? Those two characters in many ways embody the darker side of capitalism. It's so entertaining and I think you watch the film and towards the end of it you're just kind of like going, oh my god, wait, this is like a social comp and I didn't even know I was, I was taking in my spinach and my calcium and I didn't even, you know, know it. I enjoyed it so much. It's really kind of an, a nice, funny, warm-hearted tapestry of David versus Goliath, really. I'm Goliath. I'm the arsehole. I'm the jerk-off with the fake teeth. You can't scare me with tales of the big bad cartels, right? I don't know how things work. Not in Mexico. It's quite an array of odd characters. Just as much as the landscape changes from like sub-zero Chicago corporate world to dusty Veracruz. And the journey that Harold goes on is actually quite epic. And it's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Stay focused. I am focused! It's a caper, really. Whilst juxtaposing these more fun elements, you're also watching a man uh, unravel. You really believe in God? Of course I believe in God. What kind of person does not believe in God? I guess I kind of do, but not. One of the things about the film is that it is undeniably comedic, but it requires playing straight in order for it to land. And that's a tricky thing to do. I know I'm not supposed to touch the minibar, but I'm going to do it. You know, I don't even care anymore. I'm doing it, I'm having the mono. The movie has a twinkle in its eye where you're allowed to laugh and feel free as an audience to kind of enjoy the situation comedy of it all. I don't think you can survive that. I mean, the film is incredibly funny, but poignant at the same time. Nash Edgerton, the director, he knew how to elevate this in a way that I think very, very few directors would see the possibilities of. Someone should put him out of his misery. Someone should literally put him out of his misery. He's such an, a unique and interesting storyteller, and I think that's the thing that I really love about him. I hadn't done many films like this, to be perfectly honest, uh, a dark comedy. And this role, when I first read it, was very much not written for someone like me. And uh, I met with Nash, and I wanted to really challenge him on what could be possible with this kind of role. When I first had the script and we were sending it out, yeah, Harold was written as a guy from Chicago, and then I met David Oyelowo, and he told me he had this idea, and he wanted to play Harold as a Nigerian immigrant. And then he started telling me why, and started doing a few of the moments in the accent. And as soon as he did it, my heart just felt warm inside and I was like, this is inspired and I think this is a really solid idea. So I was set about casting David as Gringo. Things are going to start to get better for you. I have really lucked out. I feel like I had a really wonderful cast that were really generous with each other and with me. I just think it was really, it was really special watching them all play together.